जय गुरुदेव गुड इवनिंग एंड वॉम वेलकम टू आर एस्टीम पैनलिस्ट मिस माला सुंदरेशन मिस श्रेया चोग चेयरमैन कमोडर ए टी हर्षा फर्स्टी मिस जैना देसाई अकेडमिक हेड मिस रामा वेंकटेश अकेडमिक काउंसिल मेंबर्स प्रिंसिपल्स पेरेंट्स टीचर्स डियर स्टूडेंट्स and guest who are viewing this program i am chandrama pradhan principal sri sri academy siliguri it's an honor to be the moderator for this special interaction on be a mind manager with our international youth trainers thank you rama akka for giving me this opportunity apujya gurudev says if you have a stress free mind your thoughts will be positive today our panelists are going to give us an insight and suggestion on how to handle stress anxiety and be positive world mental health day is observed on 10th october every year with the objective of raising awareness of mental health issues and social and around us our emotional and social well being is important at every stage from childhood to adolescence to adulthood it determines how we handle stress relate to others and make choices in life this year the theme for world mental health day is kindness as it comes at a time when our lives have changed as a result of covid-19 pandemic there have been many challenges for healthcare workers students who are adapting to taking classes from home away from their school teachers and friends it's been difficult for workers whose livelihood are threatened it has also taken a toll on society and world economy however it has also brought positive changes families have been able to bond spend quality time together people are also understanding about the importance of being healthy physically mentally as well as emotionally we are here to discuss the same with our eminent panelists We have with us Miss Mala Sundaresan. Miss Mala was a player in the Indian women's cricket team, and she represented Karnataka and was the captain of Karnataka women's cricket team for more than nine years. She received the Ekalavya Award from the government of Karnataka in 1994 for her contribution to cricket. She also find ta- found time to complete her bachelor's of architecture while playing cricket. She was a graphic trainer at the Bangalore University for many years. From 2004 to 2014, she ran ten low-cost English medium schools for 4,000 slum children in Hyderabad, Bangalore, and Kolkata. She set up hygienic, mechanized, and economical kitchen to feed the children of these schools, which catered to more than 8,000 children per day. She designed. and conducted training programs for school teachers to enable them to become sensitive to children understand their own mind improve teaching methodology method, methodology and classroom management for the last 17 years she has conducted art of living programs for the youth of india and abroad she is the director of the art of living children and teens department and instruct training teachers in the nuances of teaching in youth her unwavering smile and enthusiasm is a source of inspiration for youngsters and adults alike welcome ms mala thank you so much ma ji we also have ms shreya chu an international faculty member at the art of living ms shreya plays a big role in shaping the minds of tomorrow's leaders currently She is spearheading the organization's youth program in Western India. Her goal is to empower youth to fulfill their aspirations. Over the past twelve years, Ms. Shreya has travelled extensively and taught in India and in places like Dubai, Japan, China, Egypt, Malaysia, Singapore, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, to name a few. She's been. involved in educating the youth on life skills while also addressing issues that lead to depression 
As the program regional director, Ms. Shreya not only teaches a wide range of the Art of Living courses, but is also in charge of training teachers who can lead these powerful programs. She also specializes in creating unique and engaging yoga classes for preteens and teens that help shape their mental, physical, and emotional well being. Ms. Shreya also manages to focus her attention on various social initiatives performing and organizing satsang, volunteering in old, old age homes, raising funds for the homeless and needy, and educating the children living in the slum. Ms. Shreya has also represented India on Project KEO, a satellite launched by the French government and NASA. She has also worked with multinational corporations on animation projects and graphic illustrations in Australia and USA. She teaches, the, she teaches the Prajna Yoga on the intuition, of the intuition process, I'm sorry, programs of the art of living. The program invokes the sixth sense in students and makes one calm, relaxed, and at ease with oneself. Ms. Shreya is interested in photography, enjoys adventure and sports, painting, and playing various musical instruments. She strives to excel as an instrument of Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankar, whose goal is to put a smile back on every person's face on this planet. We are indeed fortunate to have such eminent personalities who have not only worked closely with children, but have also enabled them to cope with their anxieties and difficulties. Thank you and welcome. For this Thank you so program. much, ma'am. So, um, should we start with the, should I begin with the questions? Or would you like to add something? Yes, why not? So I'll, I'll um, be asking question one each to each panelist and uh, we'll alternate uh, between each speaker. So I'll start with uh, Malaji. Yes. What causes, uh, important question of the day. What causes mental health and how can we nurture mental health and well-being children? Okay, uh, I think uh, mental health in itself is an all-encompassing word. So we could either be having excellent mental health or it could be, uh, you know, there could be lack in certain areas. And I think uh, in children today, it, uh, children and teens, it's the age where one is extremely happy, joyful, free, and uh, perhaps an age uh, where they try out so many things, everything is new, there's so much youthful energy. And if these children are stressed, that means there are other causes for it and it's not their nature. That's what Gurudev has been uh, time and again stressing upon. Now, perhaps the uh, pressure from uh, various situations around the child or the teen, from the peers, from the parents. I think more than all that, there is a pressure that we put on ourselves when we are in our teens. We would like to be, you know, we would like to make our parents proud. We would like to uh, perform so that my dad or mom uh, smiles at me. They would like to talk about me. So this in itself creates uh, some amount of pressure for the kids. And I think another big influence today on kids and teens is the reach of social media and the reach of information that one gets at that age. Um, it is an age where perhaps you are so eager to explore, but not aware of which would be the right one, which would be the wrong one. And information is available plentiful on any of the platforms that we see today. So guiding them in the right direction, allowing them to understand would become a very important part of, uh, you know, mental health for them. Mental health is also, you know, expressed as physical, mental and social well-being. Having the skills to be in a crowd, be with kids, be with adults, our behavior with everybody, 
our own, uh, you know, uh, physically being fit, being able to do what I'm supposed to do and mentally being able to handle the emotions that come with it is perhaps the definition of mental health. But due to the stresses that we spoke about, uh, handling of emotions may be an issue. Physically, there may be issues, but that is still a smaller percentage in kids and teens. And I think social, uh, uh, social interaction is another area where they need a lot more to be given inputs into. So this is perhaps the situation that is there today. And definitely it is something that can be handled uh, very, very easily and uh, very soon. And I think right from when they are in kindergarten, children and need to be given the tools to handle this so that they can overcome their emotions and they are able to smile at situations, understand, learn, be strong, and move on. Thank you. So as long as children uh, do not try to live up to someone else's expectation and be happy with who they are, I think uh, that would help them to uh, be able to be happy and be stress-free and positive also. So, and the, uh, the other question is for Shreyaji, how is physical fitness and mental fitness connected? And uh, what are the tips you can share for a child to be physically and as well as mentally healthy? Since you're a person who loves outdoor activities and uh, trekking and so on, I think yes. you're the right person to advise children on how to be physically as well as mentally healthy. You know, it's like, uh, I think they both go hand in hand and it's like you can shake hands with each other. Otherwise, uh, like, you know, you, you say in school, if you don't have a friend, then um, the reason may be because it's, it's somewhere, some, it goes down to some kind of a stress, you know. So uh, physically and mentally, you know, I would say there is a deep connection. Now, if I ask you to run and if I ask... Uh, a child to run, you know, a child will obviously have more energy and more enthusiasm and more confidence in running and more leadership qualities while running. He wants to come first while an adult would enjoy his pace and keep running. Yeah. So you see somewhere down the lane, the adult will get tired first and then the child is still running and running and running and running and he's not getting tired and he's just looking back and come on, mom, come on, dad, run. You know, what's wrong with you? So that's the space the child comes from. He comes with such an abundance of energy. But when this energy is not channelized well, it leads to mental sickness. Now, I don't think we would, uh, that would be the right word to say. I don't think anything called as mental sickness works with children. But the way that kind of a mental illness comes out in a child is in a form of irritation or maybe anger or maybe it could be in the form of throwing things around or hitting uh, people around. So, you know, th these are the kind of uh, influxes they have when they have too much energy and it's not given a right channel. And if I take, for example, the COVID times right now, children are used to playing outdoors. Children are used to expelling out their energies um, in school or in outdoor activities. It could be also just jumping into the bus, you know, a simple act like that. But here the child is stuck in indoors uh, he doesn't know how to vent it out. So what happens is somewhere down the lane, children are getting more and more confiscated. They're getting more and more, uh, they're going more into their shell. So when that physical expulsion of energy is not happening, it's coming out in the ways of anger, anxiety. Uh, it could be fear. It could be insecurities. It could be uh, a lot of fights happening with siblings at home. So pranayamas, you know, this is the best solution I would say uh, I would give for parents to do with their children or yoga. Because what happens is prana is energy, life force energy, and yama is giving direction to that life force energy. So unless we give that direction to that life force energy at this point of time in their life, uh, energy is going to get expelled, you know, expelled as anger or irritation or frustration on parents. Uh, it's going to lead to more internal fights among uh, family members. It could also be uh, expelled in ways of shouting. 
you know uh, a lot of parents during covid times have come back to me and said i don't know why my child has started shouting i don't know why my my uh, child is fighting so much with me the child does not realize that but uh, we as parents need to realize that when that physical fitness or physical exercise is not given to the child uh, it's very important that we give them alternate sources of pranayamas and meditations during this period of time make them do something creative get them into creative activities uh, during our courses of the utkarsh yoga and medha yoga uh, designed by gurudev shri shri ravi shankar this is what it is planned at it at channelizing the energy with different types of activities different types of pranayamas different types of meditation techniques and channelizing their energy with creativity you rightly said ma so you know if you could get the child involved in uh, learning new languages this is the time he can explore the internet and learn new skills he can adapt to new uh, dimensions in his life thank you i mean we can explore this to, uh, forever <laughs> yes and channelizing the energy as you rightfully said is very important you can channelize the energy in the right way i i think they'll be able to do a lot more so it's it's a way we channelize the energy but it's and uh, currently there is not very many physical activities that they can indulge in at the at home so and like you said pranayama doesn't need much space or so much time so they can do it in any part of the house any time of the day i think that's a very um, it's an excellent tip and i hope all the parents who are listening to us to us will be able to inculcate this among the children while they are at home and um, Malaji, uh, uh, you have taught uh, children the secret of breath. If I may uh, put it that way, uh, can you tell us uh, in brief about it and what are the benefits of this? Uh, you know, um, when we look at um, an adult or a person, we eat about two to three kgs of food every day. You know, we drink about two to three liters of water. this is primary research okay and we breathe about 10000 liters of air in a day but most of the time we are not even aware that we are breathing you know only when we run a little bit or when we get angry or when we get sad then suddenly the breath pattern changes and we realize oh okay i am breathing giving importance to this aspect where we are taking in 10000 liters of breath every day and also our system flushes out 90% of the accumulated stress and toxins in the body through breath it gives lot of benefits to a person if we were to focus on this aspect that we keep doing every moment of our lives so um having you know been teaching this to kids and adults for some time having done it myself i am seeing so many changes in myself you know i was uh, an extremely angry person and uh, today um, you know my smile is bigger than my anger and it's not that i don't get angry but you see the anger is gone in a very quick period of time then i can center myself and this is not just my experience this is the experience of many teens that we have been teaching these techniques to they also come back and tell me that ma'am suddenly my mind has become calm and parents are telling us like oh my children you know they were so aggressive my child and uh, he is behaving very nicely towards everybody now you know these are the subtle changes that keep happening in the person because the situation is not going to change but how we look at it can change and also when we are stressed and then we encounter a small issue it becomes a huge problem but when we have the energy as shreya was sharing some time back and when we look at the same situation with that much of energy then automatically solutions start coming up oh i can do this i can do that okay it's still like this it it becomes a challenge it is no more a problem and that is primarily because we have given this uh, attention to our breath in fact uh, 
you i mean, i'm sure all of us have got angry all of us have got sad when we are angry the breath is and when we are sad the the out breath is heavy when we are happy the breath is very light right so the techniques that are taught in the utkarsh yoga and medha yoga which are for children from the art of living designed by gurudev what happens is there is a stillness that comes into one there is this ability to understand and move forward from there there is this calmness this ability to control that emotion all this while we used to get angry the breath pattern used to change but by learning that the technique of pranayama sudarshan kriya what happens is using the breath you can change the emotion so this is the biggest benefit of course there are so many other benefits that come with breath but this calmness this settled feeling this ability to focus there are techniques to focus there are techniques to channelize the energy to certain parts of the body to certain aspects of our life which are very very important is what happens with learning the secrets of breath and sudarshan kriya i wouldn't want to talk too much about it you have to experience it it's like uh, perhaps a jamun or an ice cream i can tell you it is so wonderful so beautiful but till you eat it you won't know the taste and i would really like all the kids to have it to experience it and see the changes it brings about oneself because the mind is calm all the behavior patterns changes over a period of time and this has been the experience of parents teachers where we have taught the programs and also of friends so these are some of the benefits of breath actually i would like you to show you one small uh, research finding of what has happened after uh, you know children did uh, sudarshan kriya and our programs the survey was before and after can i request the moderator to show the slide please um could you increase the size uh, the first yeah the cognitive abilities have increased in 50% of the kids if you see there mental well being 29% kids uh, experienced uh, you know increase in their mental well being we look at emotional problems they have decreased by 69% after the program 69% children experienced decrease in ment in emotional problems shows a jump of 22% in average accuracy in any action or test that the child is performing this is what perhaps all parents look at how good is my child coping up with studies and you can see that the accuracy of the child has increased because of the calmness of the mind or the state of mind uh if you see this population with very healthy mental well being showed 237% jump that means kids who were good who had good mental well being their jump was so much more after the program hyperactivity decreased in 67% of the children uh population with conduct problems social issues how to be with each other 78% of them felt that their issues of shyness of uh you know not being properly able to handle social um, uh, you know issues reduced by 78% of them peer problems decreased for 50% of the kids now all these things are researched and the paper is already out on this and this is just an a uh, you know idea to understand that breath affects all aspects of our life including education studies social and mental well being thank you that's a very detailed explanation with uh, statistics i think many a time we take our breath for granted we don't realize the importance and uh, the importance of uh, the right way of breathing technique or even noticing how we uh, breathe so um, this is really wonderful the way you explain and i hope uh, we'll be able to practice it 
especially the young children of our schools. Yeah, um, actually, I think uh, the benefit of this is being seen in most of the SSRVM schools. I thank uh, Commodore Harsha and uh, Jaina Ramaka and all the people who are there in the SSRVM Trust who yes. have made it an uh, integral part of the education system in the entire SSRVM schools and the SSAs across yes. the world. All the, all the schools, not only for our children, but also for our teachers. And we also involve the parents. Uh, whenever we have a meet with the parents, we give them a few tips on uh, what they can do. And many of them have joined the course after their interaction with the school. So it has worked very well in our school system. Um, Shreyaji, this one question on uh, post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD. Uh, so there's a question I think from uh, a young child is therapy or um, uh, what is post traumatic stress disorder or ptsd and uh, is therapy better or is medicine better for this uh, kind of health condition i think i would say meditation is the best meditation is the best medicine because uh, you know i'll tell you uh, uh, stresses arise but we don't have the solution to go to the root cause the root cause is most important. You know, we could give them uh, uh, advice. You could give them mental therapies. You could give them uh, uh, information through books or through knowledge. But it's not going to be long lasting. And I think uh, it's very important that we go down to the deep root cause of this kind of a stress and take out the stress from there. Because if the roots are infected, then the plant is going to continue having... Uh, the disease, right? So it's very important that um, we make the child meditate. We, because uh, I don't think it's something uh, that you can do physically uh, by removing the stress from children's lives. But when when a child uh, meditates, it goes down deep down inside to giving him internal strength. Number one, that's what is most important in coming out of any kind of a traumatic stress. You know, I remember um, I was, I have taught a lot of uh, war victims. I've taught a lot of people who were into uh, hardcore uh, trauma and uh, they were not able to come out of it. They had gone through many therapies. They had gone through a lot of counseling. And when they came down to do, and these were children, when they came down to do our Uttar Yoga course, um, you know, it didn't take them even a day to start smiling. I'm sure Malaji agrees with me. Uh, we've done these programs for the trauma affected people, for the tsunami victims, or it could be the blood, uh, you know, the flood relief that happened in Bihar. I was involved in, uh, in certain places in, in the earthquake areas also. And they had lost their lives. They had lost their families. They had lost their uh, uh, friends. You know, for them, uh, everything was new. The space was new. The environment was new. It's very easy for children to come out of it. But uh, the wound was so deep lasting that just one meditation uh, or the children's kriya that we did in the program, the child was happy and smiling. Like Maladidi already explained, breath has the cure. Breath has the secret to heal one's own self. You know, every emotion, uh, like she said, is connected to the breath. And if you can just alter the breath, it's like the play of the kite, right? So the longer you leave it, it flies. In the, so you have the control in your own hands. And it's, it's uh, more subtler than the mind. So I think, uh, and it brings the child into the present moment. So he's not stuck more on the past. It's all about bringing uh, yourself in the present moment. And I think present moment is something that, is, that gives you happiness. So you're Thank automatically you. relieved of that kind of a stress. And both of you radiate joy. Your smiles. <laughs> so I can imagine when you work with children and you give that kind of reinforcement to the children, I'm sure they auto get automatically drawn towards you and you can work with them in a better manner. And uh, so this is a question from one of my teachers, in fact. Um, she's also a parent. So when I told her that I would be, you know, uh, 
you're moderating this program and I had spoken about you all. Um, so this, I think uh, many parents will also be able to relate with. Um, so it's again related to the current situation with the pandemic and the lockdown. When children are at home, uh, they are spending a lot of time in front of the screen. So her concern is that children are getting addicted to mobile this period as there's nothing much for them to do. This is making them aggressive as well as uh, moody. They have mood swings. So as a parent, uh, how can we help the children to overcome this problem? So, um, I mean, I, I'm sure many parents would be able to relate to this, uh, especially because with the screen time getting longer, one day uh, they are taking online classes at the same time they have nothing much to do they can't go out and play so they are doing how do we help them so um, any one of you could take this up or the malati or shreyaji yeah shreya go ahead <laughs> i think um... If you ask me, I would say, what can't they do? You know, uh, there is a list of like a thousand different things that children can do apart from the screen time. Of course, there is screen time uh, when it comes to education. School time ha has to happen. You have no alternatives. But beyond that, uh, if we can engage children in creative tasks, in I would start with the book itself. You know, I just give an example. Supposing you have a book in front of you, start writing a poem. Start writing a story, you know, start making caricatures, start um, doing some cartooning, start making some mandalas, uh, do some art. Uh, you could do so much with just the book in front of you and a pen in your hand. You could paint, you could uh, paint a t-shirt, you could do some creative stuff with making memes, you could make jingles, you could go down to making some uh, lovely rap, some inspirational stuff. You could, I know, I know children who opened a food blog. I had these children from SSRBM who joined me in a cooking class. And when we joined this class, uh, you know, the, the teacher was like, they are children. How are they going to do, learn cooking? I said, don't underestimate our children. You know, they study in Sri Sri Ravi Shankar Vidya Mandir and they are very talented. Because meditation gives rise to so many talents. And we have been observing this uh, from time to time. So, you know, these children started their food blogs. They have their own YouTube channels online. So communication skills are improving in children. They have become good orators. They have started public speaking. They have started taking part in elocutions, in debates online. Uh, they're taking part in quiz. So this is the time for you to uh, expand your horizons, expand your perceptions, uh, express more. Like Gurudev says, and observe more than what you can. Observe life from a different perspective. I always encourage children to think big and think global. You know, take, uh, take ownership in taking responsibility. And take responsibility for the whole society, for the whole world. And these were children who started taking responsibility. They started enrolling their friends, friends who study in different schools. They started organizing courses. And in their free times, they come and assist me. They do yoga, they teach dance, they teach music, they share their talents, whether it's uh, playing the piano or it's, they're so multifaceted children. And I think the best way to learn is when they can learn from each other, have uh, a talent con contest with each other in class and expand their horizons. So there is no limit to what you can do. You can paint your shoes, you can paint your socks, you can... You can do anything. So it's not like life is only limited to being outside and traveling and eating and socializing. We've had children who've created restaurant ambiences at home in the course, served their parents, cooked for their parents, created a menu, uh, created an entire restaurant ambience at home and played live music, conducted a Kon Banega Gyani for their parents. So, you know, it's time to explore Lockdown should be taken as a positive thing and uh, where, you know, this time is not going to come back. And parents can encourage children in 
engaging them in different activities from time to time and uh, keep them busy keep them mentally busy so if they are mentally busy and physically busy uh, i don't think they're going to be having any problems of any sorts in their life so i think it's a positive way learn sanskrit shlokas mantras is an endless list <laughs> lot of uh, positive and creative ideas that you've shared and uh, i hope we will be able to implement i mean the parents will be able to implement this and ensure that the children uh, cut down on their screen time as much as possible so they uh, we've talked a lot about uh, children now uh, it's for malaji uh, these are tough times for adults as well uh, children have been badly hit but so have been the adults and they are constantly fighting to sustain themselves in this world where there is uncertainty when it comes to their business not doing well or people are losing their jobs so what advice would you give adults and how to deal with this well um i think the uh, answer uh, to this is also the same as kids once we start looking inside looking within us that is when the answers start coming out the solutions start coming and looking inside or looking uh, towards this would be through meditation to through breathing techniques and i would strongly recommend that they do the happiness program or the online breath meditation and breath workshop which gives them the mental strength to you know navigate this time in the most effective way this is not permanent perhaps it will stay for some more time yes the situation right now is reality but then uh, i am sure we have the tools within us yes financially uh, it perhaps is a difficult time uh, professionally also it's a difficult time times have changed we need to adjust ourselves to a new normal but all that can happen when there is this conviction within oneself that look at the end of the day i am still good and that can happen only when we are stress free and this situation is the same for many people across the world and yes health wise there is so much uncertainty today there is so much fear to go out but all these things one can handle only through the breath any amount of counseling talking or engaging oneself in an external activity would give relief to that level but understanding it in the right sense making those right changes in decisions um, knowing that you are taken care of by the divine which gives tremendous strength happens when we start meditating when we start doing pranayama when we start doing yoga and uh, for me personally one question changed my life you see when i was playing cricket it was all about oh i have to get this much runs that person is getting so i need to be good i need to be good what more can i do to make myself better but when i did this uh, those days it was called the part 1 program or the basic course and when i did it gurudev's one line stuck in my head and that line was what can i do for you and when i started asking this question to people my own life started changing smile came back to my life because at that time i was dropped from the indian side you can imagine my state so this one question what can i do for the world for someone else perhaps takes you through your own difficulties in a very smooth way uh definitely the online meditation and breath workshop uh, of course you can take up the meditation challenge uh, satsangs yes all these things would would help thank you that's a very nice sentence that gurudev has asked i mean the one important statement that has changed uh, your attitude if i may put it that way is what can i do for you i think that's wonderful if everyone starts thinking in that way I mean, the world would be a happier place. I'm sure the adults at home, as well as the children, would be happy. And uh, um, like um, Shreya ji said about um, the various things that one can do at home, the creative uh, 
with a lot of creative ideas that you've given us. Uh, the other thing is also about uh, while during this lockdown, how can we empower ourselves with uh, life skills? I think uh, you also deal a lot with children and talk about life skills also. So how can young children use this opportunity of lockdown to empower themselves in uh, life skills? If you can just uh, give us a few tips on how we can do that. Sayaji? Yeah, sure. But I think Malaji wanted to say something. I will oh, let Malaji okay. speak some. Yeah. I would like to say, yeah. I think this is the time life skills are needed the most. I mean, there is so much opportunity to do, whether you are small, whether you are big, or whether you are anything, male, female, white, black, doesn't matter. The world needs you. Yes, Shreya. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's what I said. You have all the time in the world. You have all the space in the world within yourself. Within yourself and within yourself, both spaces, you know. So since you're anyways locked down within, it's best to go within and explore the life skills. I mean, there is no lack of uh, what you can't do at this point of time in your life. Uh, we are just restricting our uh, space within and, and blocking ourselves from thinking beyond what we can do. If you ask me, um, the best explorations in the world happened in a lockdown. I would just say thousands of years ago was in caves. That's that was a, like a that was a physical lockdown they would do for themselves. They would go sit in the cave, meditate, and nature has provided us our own homes as caves today, and given us this space to go within. So why not encounter this in the most fashionable way? You know, you like to encounter. Uh, I'll, I'll talk on uh, with respect to children. You know, they love adventure. They want to go for uh, natural safaris. They want to explore. So everything is about exploring outside. This is the space and the time to explore within. And once you explore within, I tell you, talents will just manifest. And you will come out with such amazing life skills uh, that, that, you know, once you're outside in the outdoor world, you will be able to conquer it. Now, a simple example. Uh, I'll give you what happens when you feel sad, you, you know, something inside you contracts. And what happens when you feel happy? There's something inside you that expands, right? Now, the whole world is about understanding what is it that is contracting and what is it that is expanding within us. That is the whole source of life. That is what meditation is actually. If we can understand the source, you know, I think we can learn so much more and uh, we can broaden our perspectives about life from a, a small pointed focus to a broader vision. So what happens is, you know, the whole uh, idea about life changes, the whole response towards life changes and our feelings towards life also change. And, you know, like uh, we were talking all about feelings and emotions before this, during the lockdown, I would say that feelings are just a projection of who we are. And what we need to understand from this space is that where are we really coming from? If we can understand the space of where we are coming from, as Gurudev Sri Sri Ravi Shankarji always says, we can explore anything within us. And um, I always tell children uh, and teens in my courses and also adults that there is, there is a limitlessness to what we can do. There is, there's, there's a field of uh, impossibilities and meditation makes it possible. So everything is all about life. You're talking about life skills. So give a little attention to life. Skills will start manifesting. I just want to add to what Shreya said. There's a group of about... Yeah, that's a wonderful way of putting it. Um, there's a group of kids who, uh, you know, just enumerating what Shreya said, who did the course and they connected some senior citizens who needed stuff during the lockdown with people who were going on bikes and supplying this as a, uh, you know, utility for senior citizens. So this, these children took up the responsibility. They would call up the senior citizens and say, what do you want? Oh, okay, this is the list, this is the list. Okay, call up these people who are delivering these things on cycles 
uh, who were actually again uh, our IT people and very young entrepreneurs who wanted to do something to the society. So these teams actually bridged that gap where they brought in people who needed and people who wanted to do seva together from where they were. You see that shows life skills they're taking up initiative compassion um, ensuring that people are safe so it is all possible so these were done by children itself yes they were done by teens they were a group of teens uh, of course who have done our programs and all that they were supervised also it was not unsupervised but still they got the idea they took it up it was their uh, initiative and they acted as the bridge between these two communities that's, that's very nice. And children can come up with all kinds of new ideas if, if they can put their mind to it. So I think we have time for one last question before we take up if there's any questions from the viewers. We started with the mental health question. So I'd like to end with um, how can we tell if someone has uh, mental health issues and how can we help them? Uh, in, Anyone, if you can take it up, you can take it up. Both of you would like to add to it. I think I already added. How do you say that your feelings say it? Your feelings are a protection of who you are and where you come from. And any feelings, you know, you just cannot kindle inside you just like that. You have to go to the source to understand where that feeling is arising from. If you're you're going through a feeling of fear, what is the source of that fear? If you're going through a feeling of frustration, go down to that source of frustration and where is it coming from? And you can understand this. You cannot remove it by just advices and, um, you know, wisdom. So going down to that source and meditation can really help you go down to that source to understand it. And I think your whole being just expresses who you are. So... I don't think there is an understanding that is required for anything like that. Um, I think your sixth sense guides you and tells you a child understands when the mother is sick, whether the mother says it or not. So these are vibes and it's all about a play of energy. And when your energies are low, automatically you face uh, lower energies of sadness or, uh, or dullness or laziness or no interest in life. You know, I, there's there's something very interesting I want to say here before Mala Didi says something. I used to teach in uh, a lot of colleges. And I remember uh, uh, earlier days, you know, five, ten years ago, it's been 18 years now since I'm teaching. And eight, ten years ago, children would come to me with a lot of hope. Hope about life, hope about happiness, hope about faith. And today, those same children, the same age group talks about hopelessness. There were times when the same children would talk about what is life, who are we, you know, what is the purpose of me being here, what can I do to contribute to the world around me. And the same teens and same children, the, uh, the young adults, I would say, are talking about killing themselves, about suicide, about taking away their lives. What is the purpose of my life? They come back to me and say, why should I live? Why do I need to live? You know, what am I going to contribute to this world? And there were, there were times when there was so much meaning in their life. There, was, there were things that parents would add meaning to their life. Friends would add meaning to their life. Emotions would add meaning to their life. And today, the same children come back with uh, life and say that, you know, it's meaningless. It doesn't make sense to me. What is mindfulness? It's mindlessness. I don't want to learn this. So times have changed and it's high time we... Uh, reverse this cycle and I allow Maladidi to speak about it. I think Shreya has covered it very effectively. Uh, perhaps one of the things as adults uh, and parents and teachers we could be aware of is ensuring that there is a communication between us and the child or the teen so that they feel confident to come and share with you and have this discussion and not just you know, keep talking to themselves or their own group of friends. That's when the issue starts, when they do, they do not feel confident enough to come and share whatever it is, be it uh, a very severe issue or a small one or whatever. 
and i think as adults we need to open up our horizons uh, be a friend uh, gurudev has also spoken about this quite a lot and there is a sanskrit saying which says aprapte shodashe varshe putra mitrava dacharet um, in the olden days they said that when the child is at 16 years you should treat them as your friend but today i think uh, because of the advancements in technology science and everything around us it has come to 12 13 10 sometimes so you need to be friendly you need to be friends with their friends you need to keep that channel of communication open with the open mind with no judgment judgment is what makes them hesitate to come to you and if that is open i am sure you and your child or your teen will have lovely wonderful life but when the channel nice. breaks down is the issue yes so it's important to keep your channel of communication open on both sides i think you summed it up very well and uh, i i am not sure if there are any question from the viewers ramaji i am not able to see any question so i don't think there are any questions uh, by the viewers so i'd like to thank uh, both uh, malaji and shivaji for this wonderful session it's been uh, very informative been very interactive giving us relevant examples and i'm sure all the children and the adults have learned a lot today whoever has been listening to stay positive to stay take care of their well being i'd also like to thank uh, ramaji once again and this srvm team bangalore for organizing this session and i would like to end with one of pujya gurudev sayings again train the mind to live in the present moment drop the stress that you are carrying for nothing a smile is worth the whole world and more so stay safe and take care and thank you very much thank you thank you thank you so much srvm thank you team srvm for giving us such a lovely opportunity to share with the whole world and all the parents and children such beautiful wonderful wisdom and i hope this spreads to more and more parents and children around you that little one responsibility if we can share with at least 10 friends around us the wisdom that we have gained today i think it can reach um far horizons thank you so much i hope you get to visit our school some day and interact with our children one on one so in a time in a situation we better and we allowed to travel it's a long way from bangalore so i hope you get to meet and uh, be able to interact with our children they're definitely going to learn a lot uh, from you both so thank yeah. you once again. yeah uh, i would like to thank uh, of course the ssrv and team but i would also like to Uh, request all the parents and the students here to spread the good word that SSRVM is doing. I think it is changing the environment around them in cities and in not just in the school. So it is very important to have these schools everywhere. And I wish all the best to the entire SSRVM team and the parents, of course, as Shreya said, speak about the good work that's happening both uh, in terms of uh, children and in terms of the uh programs of the art of living thank you so much for inviting me jai gurudev jai gurudev thank you i would really like to uh, add one thing ma'am uh, you know for the past uh, 18 years that i have traveled to almost 44 countries i haven't seen a, a chain of schools like ssrvm uh, wherein you have integrated meditation yoga and human values in the, as a part of the curriculum in schools and there's a huge difference um, in the ssrvm schools and the different schools that i have visited and taught and it's visibly seen in children children are smiling more i have uh, almost a collection of 1 lakh photographs from ssrvm and if you compare it with uh, children from any other spectrum you can see a smile on their face like you said you know smile marks their success and it's so beautiful to see that you actually imbibe the values of gurudev shri ravi shankar and the wisdom of uh, the past centuries in these children and it's actually working on the root cause of uh, extracting the stresses from the children's lives thank you so much
Thank you. Thank you, Samaji.